would like to call the order of the regular board meeting of May 21st, 2018. The Board of Park Commissioners of the Lake Park Park District, Lake County, Illinois. Roll call, please. Commissioner Earhart. Here. Commissioner Gordon. Absent with prior notice. Commissioner McKendry. Here. Commissioner Mossbarger. Absent with prior notice. Commissioner Patera. Here. Commissioner Wallace. Here. President Douglas. Here. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. And a roll call, please. Commissioner Earhart? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. President Douglas? Yes. Uh, now is the time for a statement of visitors for non-agenda items. And okay, well, and we'd like to try to, uh, once again, limit to three minutes okay. so that... No, I won't be that long. Could you all just state your name and your address again? You don't have to. You don't have to do that? I'm happy to, though. Well, we won't probably try your three minutes. <coughs> no, 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 we won't hold it against I'm happy to. Colette Asmussen, I'm on 130 East North Avenue. Um, I just wanted to give some updates from the Lake Bluff Community Golf Association. Today we count as our official fundraising kickoff, which is very exciting. So we can kick it off today with a couple of things that have come together. One is the Friends of Lake Bluff Parks has now updated their site, so you can donate specifically to um, specific entities including golf so that was important for us as well as having forms so I would like to ask all of you to kick off the donation and pledges yourself I have forms and envelopes for you that I'll pass out after um, my, my couple of minutes here some other things that we've done we started the clubhouse spruce up we pulled the carpet out this weekend in the women's bathroom and put new carpet in so that's very exciting the big PTO events was um, I heard inklings that why is the bathroom carpet look so terrible and so there were some people coming in Sunday when we were ripping out the carpet so they were very happy so that's exciting um, we're also going to have some posters door drafts donation envelopes we're partnering with Park District and Lake and uh, friends out on emails events um, we're going to have some yarn signs in the next couple weeks we're, we have a table approved at the farmers market right outside uh, be involved in the 4th of July parade. We're working with Billy um, Casper on the Night at the Range event to give local awareness and advertising and do some food trucks. So there's a lot going on, more to come, but I did just want to let you know that we have officially kicked off our fundraising effort. Okay, thank you. Um, any other public comments for non-agenda items? <coughs> My name is Larry Cotter, I'm 1014 Foster Avenue. And uh, I'm interested in hearing alternative ideas. I'm sensing that there may be an element of possible magical thinking here in terms of the finances and the goals, lofty goals that have been set. And if they are not attained, I'm interested in hearing discussion of uh, budget, future budgets. Uh, is the $265,000 goal, is that to be raised every year? Should the committee that's working so hard on making this happen, should they be aware that they should be doing this every year in order to meet, uh, make ends meet? And if uh, the 2019 budget deficit is significantly greater than this current year, does that raise the bar and the goal? And as far as the commissioners are concerned, I, I, I've been trying to speak about future land use options, despite the fact that in many of our public forums that is a prohibited topic. But I think it's something that a third rail that we need to be touching, and I'm interested in hearing the comments from the commissioners on that subject. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from? Is there for non agenda items? Uh, seeing no more, we'll move on to our next item, and that's the approval of meeting minutes. Uh, so, may I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes of April 16th, 2018, for the regular board meeting? So moved. Second. 
Please. Commissioner Earhart? Yes. Commissioner McHenry? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. President Douglas? Yes. And they have a motion to approve uh, the minutes from May 7th, 2018 for the special board meeting. So moved. Second. Uh, President Davis, can I just, after making a statement yes. regarding that, so I did want to clarify uh, the motion for the, the fundraising, because that was a big topic. So the motion for the fundraising and the timeline, and our attorney Scott Puma and I reviewed it and we just want to clarify for the record that it is for operations and cap and or capital, which is deemed necessary by the board. So uh, I just want to make sure everyone understood that. So as we send out messaging moving forward, it's not just for capital, that it's and or operations and or. So I wanted to make sure before anybody voted they had questions for us regarding that. Are those the only two possible categories? Or, I mean, right? So you're saying it's all inclusive. It's all inclusive. all complicated. Because yeah, so. it, it wasn't specific in nature. So, so that was the intent? Was, that was the intent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So okay. I just want to make sure as we send out, start sending out messaging that it's just clear. So no surprises. So. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Any other comments, anyone? Please. Commissioner Earhart? Yes. Commissioner McHenry? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. President Douglas? Yes. Moving on to the consent agenda, may I have a motion to accept May 1 and May 21st, 2018 payables? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Any comments, questions? Roll call, please. Commissioner Earhart? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. President Douglas? Yes. Now I may have a motion to approve the May 1st <coughs> and 21st, 2018 payables. So moved. Second. And roll call, please. Commissioner Earhart? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. President Douglas? Yes. Okay, next item is finance. Uh, the 2018 April and year to date financials. Yeah, I'll give uh, a basic update and then I'll try to add a couple things. So, a month in April was uh, right in line with budget. I'm on page 31. And um, there are some timing differences. There is uh, some dollars that uh, we haven't received, which is the personal property tax. Uh, and Scott might be able to explain that through that. Through you for a loop on that one a little bit, but it's uh, a confusing one over the years. When when the state eliminated the personal property tax or personal tax, they actually had this replacement tax to make up for it. And it's based on your population of you income. It's this small percentage of, of uh, tax for the per population. And I'm assuming that the state's late on that because they're late on everything else. So it's a replacement tax that is based on the amount that you received in the year in the 70s when the tax went out. And, it, and it's a small percent. So, so it's probably uh, eight thousand. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say six was gonna be my gas measure Okay, so that's some of the reasons. And then year to date we're ahead of budget. And some of that uh, we are we do see some trends. We just had some less participation in kids zone and April. Uh, so, uh, Jim and Tina, they'll continue to look at that and monitor that. In terms of year to date, we're ahead of budget, uh, but that includes March golf. Remember, it's not April golf, for the fact is, by the time <coughs> the reports, we miss the timing, we'll be talking at the facilities and programs committee where we're at, and we'll give a little bit of an update. Uh, very pleased with fitness and where we're at, so we're very excited that the business strategy is working so far. Programs are on target, and uh, the park, golf, and facility maintenance is in line as well. So uh, we we have had some openings this year in a couple of positions, so uh, they haven't been filled. We're getting close to filling those. 
So we have some statements there. I'll turn it over to Ed just quickly to talk about fitness and golf, and you can give me an update on that. I mean, those numbers also are great. Yeah. You're looking Definitely. really good at yeah. it. Yeah, thank you. So, well, yeah, so we'll start with Fitness Center, um, just where we stand at the end of April. So we're $20,000 better than budget right now, and that's, uh, which is great. Uh, 80000 compared to last year. Um, twofold on that, there's two, I think, main reasons. Uh, year to date to budget, uh, we are about $13,000 ahead in memberships. So we really are seeing a, a really nice uptick in our, in our members. Um, that fitness plan, that monthly recurring membership, obviously we started the year with zero members there. Uh, we uh, are up to 318 as of, we went to report just a handful of minutes ago. Um, and our retention rate is above 99% right now. Um, so it's a really great membership for us from an administrative standpoint. It's very easy for us to retain these members. Um, and so we're very pleased with that. There are some savings with regards to the lease that uh, we've got the lease payments haven't quite started yet. So there's some savings that we're realizing this year that ultimately at the end of the day, we need that reinvestment in equipment. And so we'll, those have come back, but, uh, but all in all, I think we're in a really good position and trending in the right direction. <clears throat> Any questions, I guess, on fitness? No. All right. Yeah, so the, so, the gap, sure. so the increase versus prior year, I know we've given you guys a, a stretch target as well. Yes. Is that Was that put into the budget? It was. It was. Yes. So this is with the stretch This target. is with the stretch. Yeah, the 127 stretch was spread out over three years. Yeah. Um, I believe we were to realize, I think it was 50,000 in year one, year, if I recall. Yeah. So yeah, so that 50,000 is built into this year and we're 20,000 on the way to that. Um, and then the last year stuff, there's some, there's some savings because of timing and all that, but, but definitely, yeah, we're moving in the right direction. That's great. So. Uh, not without challenges. So I'll give you the one challenge is our yoga program hasn't quite taken off as quickly as we wanted to. Um, so we are continuing with promotional pricing through May, but we're really going to try to leverage what we feel is a competitive advantage with the beach. And we're going to highlight our beach yoga program. So we're going to run classes three mornings a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday mornings down at the beach. We already started promotions. There's signage down at the beach, signage here at the drive. Um, we're going to try to get people introduced to our yoga program through that unique selling proposition that we have of taking the program down at the beach and then hopefully we'll retain them in the fall. We'll evaluate numbers when we get through a year. If we're still struggling, we'll just have to evaluate where that program's going to go, but our hope is that we can drum up some business with this, uh, with our beach yoga program. So. And can you do drop-in without signing up? For you can, okay. yes. And then and that's where our promotional pricing is now. We started with promotional pricing or reduced pricing on some of our packages. Um, but now our, we're doing promotional pricing on those drop-in visits. So fitness center members are $5 a visit, non-members are $10 a visit. And then um, with regards to the beach yoga, the first class you take with beach yoga is free. So the idea is that we get some people just to come down and try us, and then we can hopefully get them to come back. So Ed, I love the idea of, I personally haven't received any communication on that as a user, not as a board member, but as a user. Um, so I'm not sure that people know that yoga is five bucks. Sure. So are we, what, how, what channel have you used? We've been doing some out? signage up at the fitness center. Yeah, I saw that. Um, we have done some promotion, some posting on Facebook. Um, I believe it was in our most recent e-newsletter, but I, I would have to double check. We are going to roll out this week with some more of that because we're launching. We just put out the signage with the Beach Yoga program. It starts a week from tomorrow. So this week is really kind of like our ramp up to that Beach Yoga and the free class and coming down and kind of launching that as a part of this program. So we will add the 5 and $10 as a part of that package and that messaging that we send out to the community. So we'll make sure that we paint a brush, brush with, with that messaging and try to get to as many residents as possible. With regards to golf, what's included, obviously we have a little bit of a delay just because of the financials from BCG to us. So I'm going to report on kind of where we stand with regards to BCG through March. What's in your board packet is that we were through March $3,000 favorable in revenue and $18,000 favorable overall with regards to BCG. April was 
It just received final financials from BCG this morning. April was obviously a challenging month for us. $18,000 miss to budget on the revenue standpoint. We did have about $5,000 in expense savings, so overall we missed budget um, by $13,000. So that puts us at the end of April, and what you'll see in your report with BCG next month will be a $15,000 miss to revenue budget, but will be $5,000 favorable overall. It means there's about $20,000 of savings. Some of that is timing, but some of that is realized savings, some reduced labor expenses because of the days that we've been closed or that we've had impacts from weather. Um, I would say a vast majority of that is actually realized savings. We're not going to spend that money later on down the road. We have missed budget by about 250 rounds through April. So primarily that missed to budget is because of the conditions and we just haven't driven the rounds that we would have liked to have had at this point in the year. What we're doing with the Facility and Programs Committee is we're reporting now weekly on where we stand with, with revenue. So I can give you an update through Sunday. Um, and this fully realizes all of memberships. Memberships are accrued. In the financials that you receive, memberships are accrued over five months starting in May. Um, with regards to the reporting that I'm providing the committee, those memberships are, are not accrued. We take them in a cash basis. So right now, uh, we're looking at another kind of negative, continuing negative trend. So about a $3,000 miss right now is what we're on pace for here in May, so far, month to date. And then right now, we're about $12,000 behind in memberships. Majority of those memberships that we're missing are on the resident side. In fact, pretty much exclusively on the resident side. We're down in resident membership sales right now, compared to budget and compared to last year. Any questions at all? With Thank you, Ed, for the update. The weather in April last year, how was it? Oh, I don't think I remember. It was better than it was this year, uh, but it wasn't outstanding. Um, but it was better than it was. This year. We had more playable days last year than we did this year. Yeah, we had two months of March. Is what it is. Yeah. And another week of it here. Yeah. This yeah, week, so. It's not healthy. No. Commissioner Earhart? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. President Douglas? Yes. Okay, moving on to the next item of finance, purchase cards, ratification. Uh, we were right in line last year, just off by about $3,000, which is all budgeted for, and it's just related to fund fair supplies and the conference for preschool as well as. NRP membership that was just budgeted in a different month, so nothing out of the usual. It shows consistent spending when needed. Any questions at all? May I have a motion to ratify the purchase card payment of $44,657.03? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Earhart? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. President Douglas? Yes. Moving on, item five, unfinished, and or continuing business. Uh, 53 in your packet. Page 53. It's basically a common practice that we bring the 2017-2018 board business to a close. Um, bear with me for a second. Um, yeah, I seem to be on the wrong page here. Bear with me. I'm sorry. 53. Got, yeah, I'm on still. There we go. Thank you. So, as president of the Park uh, Lake Club Park District Board and the Park Commissioners, I hereby declare the 2017-18 board is now complete. And I guess there's no action or motion 
required, so we'll move on to the next item. So the next one is the call to order the 2018-19 board. So the secretary to the board, I declare the first meeting of the 2018-19 board. Now call the order. And can I get a roll call, please? Commissioner Earhart? Yes. Should I call the absent ones? Uh, yes. Commissioner Gordon? Absent with prior notice. Commissioner McHendry? Yes. Commissioner Mossbarger? Absent with prior notice. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. Commissioner Douglas? Yes. Okay. Now that we're in the attendance, we'll move on to the next item here. This one. So, uh, officially, the Park District Code requires the President, Vice President, to be elected annually. And so, since Brock is not here, uh, Vice President is run through this and basically um, I'll be requesting a motion uh, to move that ex commissioner be cast for the president of the board from 2018 to 2019 and then someone will second it and then uh, we'll then I'll request any other nominations and then we'll go to a roll call so I guess I am asking is there a motion to be made to move to someone be the president I move that Rob Douglas be cast for president of the board for the 2018-19 year. Is there a second? I second it. Are there any other nominations? I move that Rob Gordon be president of the board for the 2018-2019 term. Is there a second? Uh, you don't want to uh, yeah. Is there a second? Guys, for lack of summer. Okay. Um, so then I will do a roll call. Uh, yes. Are there any other nominations? We're doing president only. Right? We're president, president, only. president only. Okay. Just, just, just so I get Okay. Okay. So then I need a roll call to close the nominations. Yes. So I need a roll call. Marsha. Do we need to a close the motion? Roll we'll call for the original motion? We, this is a motion to close nominations. Okay. Now we need a motion. To, we, need a, a motion. we need a motion to close the nominations. Make a motion to close nominations. Yes. yes. I second it. Okay. And now we need a roll call. Commissioner Earhart? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. Commissioner Douglas? Yes. So now. Now there's a vote. Motion to 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 vote. You can vote for yourself. It's not like there's extra pay here. That's true. Your yes is kind of important here. You want to do this. So. Yeah. That's right. So thank you. Thanks, Rob. Thank you for, thank you for stepping up again. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank, thank, thank you for last year as well. Yes. Yeah, really. Well. Okay, well, we'll move on to the next so one. Which is just just declare the, that the vice president, yeah. uh, president uh, Rob Douglas, has been elected service president of the board. And you assume the duty of the first in command and now to the vice president. You, know, you, you take it back. Yeah, you take it back. Uh, I do this one. Okay, well, I'd like to we'll walk you through. I would like to move to have Brock Gordon as vice president of the board. I second it. And I forgot to request any other nomination. Any other nominations for Vice President? No. Hearing none. Motion to close the nominations. So, I get a motion to close the nominations. So moved. Second. And that will be a roll call, please. Commissioner Earhart? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. President Douglas? Yes. So now we take a roll call of the votes. Vice President. Okay. So 
actually a motion on that or just a vote? Well, there's 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 a motion on the table for it. Yep. So, so that's a motion for the vote for Brock. Commissioner uh, Earhart. Yes. Commissioner McKendry. Yes. Commissioner Patera. Yes. Commissioner Wallace. Yes. President Douglas. Yes. So I, as president, now declare that Brock Gordon has been fully elected to serve as vice president of the board of park commissioners. The vice president now assumes the duties of the second in command, and I hope he is feeling better. Down on the way. So. Thank you, okay. Brock. Thank, Thank you, you Brock. And we'll move on to the next item. Then. So, um, who does the vice president? Who nominates as the vice president? Well, I mean, does the vice president nominate the secretary? Uh, it's part of appointments. So, yeah, because now we move into appointments. And we'll see that on the page 57. Um, let's see, Ron, should I be reading these positions and appointments here? Yeah, so if, I, if you want, I can go through it. Okay, why don't you go ahead, please. Uh, so the 2017-18 appointments, so basically the appointments in 17-18, Ansel Blank, Diamond Bush, PCME, and Kraft for uh, recommend appointment, Ansel Blank, Diamond uh, Bush, PCME, and Kraft for treasurer for 017-018. There's Bob Wallace, that one is open at this time. Uh, Bob is uh, stating he does not want to be treasurer. The alternate treasurer is the vice president, and as well as for 018-19, secretary of the board, right at the 017-018 is executive director. 018-19 is recommended here as executive director. Uh, the alternate uh, secretary of the board, uh, we had superintendent facilities services, and we recommended superintendent finance and human resources. And then in 017 and 018, as an SSRA and ADA representative, that's the executive director. 2018-19 recommendation is executive director. And the alternate NSSRA and ADA rep is the superintendent of community recreation, safety, and outreach services. And the recommended appointment at 018 and 19 is the superintendent of community recreation, safety, and outreach services. The committees are usually determined the following month based on the board giving feedback to the board president. So. That's what's in front of you. Okay. So the president will um, appoint the treasurer. Is okay. that? It's, it's up to. It's up to. Okay. All right. I would like to nominate Commissioner Franz Patera for treasurer. Keep smiling. <laughs> second. second. I didn't see that coming. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Neighbor. <laughs> Um, do you so know, actually so. can just add to the, the list of nominees. You know, yeah. I appreciate the motion in the second, but um, they, the board does have to vote on the recommended appointments, and so you can just add. the treasurer doesn't have to be. Uh, so yeah, it's really so good. So I do like that. Oh, I'll <laughs> So do the motion right now. The second. Yeah, you, know, you, you can do that if you like, or you can just add Franz to the. Okay, yes. Franz Patera is our treasurer. And then you would need a motion to, to appoint you. It's just this. So, yeah, may I have a motion to accept the appointments uh, as outlined? Accept it. With uh, adding Franz Patera, Commissioner Franz Patera, as treasurer. For the 2018? Yes, I was about to say that. Okay. For the 2018-19. Uh, financial year. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Earhart. Yes. Commissioner McKendry. Yes. Commissioner Patera. Yes. Commissioner Wallace. Yes. President Douglas. Yes. Okay, moving Thank on. You, Fox. Yes. Thank you, Fox. Thank, Thank you, Bob. Bob. <laughs> For like your prior years. Well, <laughs> Yes, uh, thank you. Seriously, you did a really, really, really awesome yeah. job. We had great financial years. Yeah. So I think how we usually work is you have an interest in a specific committee, you can let me know or let Rob know, and then we'll put it together and I'll put it together for the board. Yeah, because it's an opportunity if you want to shuffle 
positions around because obviously Franz now will be going to finance and future planning. Um, so that opens up a spot with your old position. And we can start reshuffling the cards a little bit depending on what people want to pursue or want to be interested in. But that's good. So I'll check with you between now and the June board meeting, so we'll have that all slated out by then. I mean, Franz, you get to review the audit report. This is excellent. What? The audit report. <laughs> I guess I have to change maybe Fun. my date, so. <laughs> so. I just was going to ask it tonight. <laughs> See if you're available May 31st. May 31st. I'm sure Bob will help you. I will help you. I will be happy to help you. I'd like to. Yes, I will be happy to help with whatever you want. Okay. That's when you're elected. Got it. Oh, wow. Okay, well, we're going to move on to the next item, which is the clubhouse and the ADA requirements. Uh, with <coughs> Mr. John McGovern is going to present to us his information. So I thought I'd do some background uh, as John comes up and settles in. So tonight we have John McGovern. He's our Americans with Disability Act consultant. John is nationally recognized and presents at these meetings frequently all across the country. So um, President Douglas, uh, John, and I met Thursday to go over the format, and I don't know if you want me to go through that quickly, is that from my understanding, he'll present quickly, uh, by 10 minutes, be able for the board to ask questions, the community, so then Rob would go back out to the community, and be more feedback instead of question and answer, then I'd come back to the board for questions to him. So uh, what we try to do is have John answer some of the questions that some of the golf association um, posed to us. And but uh, to start, it, it just why John is here. So when I arrived here, and John will get into this, is uh, at that time there wasn't a self evaluation that was required. What we call an ADA transition plan, and so. And the board approved a transition plan in 2010, and then they finished their work in 2011. And then uh, at that point in time, we, uh, we had a lot of other ADA projects, so we just didn't get to the golf clubhouse. We're still looking at a variety of things. And then when we started in negotiations with Billy Casper Golf, and it was right around 2016, it was really important that we outline any potential issues going into that agreement that Ansel Blink was working on so that they knew what they were getting themselves into. And so we outlined all the ADA needs at that time. So John Rayleigh from FGM Architects, Rob Foster and I, um, and we've had, we met with them on site at the golf clubhouse and went through the 2011 uh, issues that uh, the transition plan identified and so John will go into detail so that's kind of why this came up in 2016 so at that time we really had a three-year window because it was a three-year contract with the golf so uh, I wanted to make sure I gave the board some background on why we started pursuing this back in 2016 and it really started and it was really supposed to be well before that but it really the contract itself started to stimulate the conversation when do we need to make repairs? So, uh, John, take it away. Thanks, Ron, and thanks to the board for your time tonight. I'll try to keep it to about 10 minutes and I'll talk a little bit about the Americans with Disabilities Act as it applies to unusual one of a type structures like you have at the golf course. I'll talk a little bit about some of the definitions in the ADA and how they might apply here. I'll spend some time talking about conversations that we've had with the Illinois Attorney General's office regarding the hypothetical of a park district with a golf course clubhouse that is not compliant and how they might view uh, that situation if a complaint were to arise from that. And then I'll share any of the experiences that I can with you. I'm a partner at the WT Group and I've headed the accessibility practice for 10 years. So a couple of the examples I use will be from communities, not within Lake Bluff, but I hope they'll give you some insight as to how other jurisdictions have handled this. 
So I know you all know about the Americans with Disabilities Act. It's a broad federal civil rights law. It's intended to uh, prohibit discrimination uh, in three principal areas, policy, programs, and facilities or sites. Nobody from the Park District stands up and purposely tries to prevent a person with a disability from using a site. But inadvertently, <coughs> because the site's not made accessible, that could be viewed as discriminatory. Uh, you might adopt an ordinance prohibiting pets in certain areas, but not make adequate provisions for service animals. That might be considered discriminatory. Or I might register my son for summer camp, and maybe he's on the autism spectrum, then you might not provide the supports that he needs. That too could be viewed as discriminatory. So think broadly, it's not just about bricks and mortar, it's programs and policies as well. In the conversations that we've had with staff, as best I can tell, this really boils down to the issue of how does a local government with a one-of-a-kind, unique, built structure address accessibility for that site. So it happens to be the golf course clubhouse here, but it could just as easily be a swimming pool, and that's an example I'm going to use. A conservatory, that's another example I'll use. Uh, or a fitness facility. All of those are sites that have found themselves in the same situation. Uh, Do we that have any in. others as part of the park district here? Any other? other than the clubhouse? We're aware of the clubhouse, but any other? Deficiencies? Yeah, you know, we have a plan. That's our right. idea, transition right. plan. So we try to address like the playgrounds we did. Right. So we try to do a little As few things, the beach, the stairways. So the challenge is to be able to get to it all. Right. So yeah, the transition plan, there are a handful of ADA requirements that the district has taken steps towards meeting. One is that you must evaluate every single asset that you have and generate a list of what we call access deficits. Then two, you're told that you do not have to retrofit every single asset, but you have to make enough assets accessible so that the programs are made available. If you had three golf courses, we might not be having this conversation, but you just have one. So you can't do some of the things that you might do if you had multiple golf courses, like designate one as the accessible course with an accessible clubhouse. That's not a circumstance that's available to you right now. The transition plan is nothing more than a phase schedule of when you're going to do the retrofits. Um, the Department of Justice and the U.S. Congress recognize that no unit of local government can make all the retrofits occur at once. So because you're doing this voluntarily, you get to pick a time frame and get the work done over time so that it matches your resources but also matches the ABA mandate. Um, when we did the access audit work for you in 2010 and then the transition plan in 2011, we incorporated those concepts and give the district credit for getting that work done, um, but realized that, that transition plan should have been really finished by January 26th of 1995. There are 89,000 units of local government. I can tell you that probably 88,000 of them missed that deadline, so don't feel bad. Um, for a recreation agency like the Park District, this became particularly important when the 2010 standards for the first time adopted guidance regarding golf courses, fitness facilities, playgrounds, sports fields, and so forth. So you, along with many other jurisdictions, picked it up and addressed it then because it addressed more of your own infrastructure at that point. You did say 1995. It did. Yeah. The ADA became effective January 22, I'm sorry, January 26 of 1992, and you had three years to identify all your deficits and then make retrofits to all of them. That was an impossible timeline to me. And then in 2010, it became more clear regarding parks. Regarding park and recreation. Park and assets. recreation. So before, was it out of scope? Or was uh, it, just it, kind of it wasn't addressed. You were per the Title II regulation. Think of Title II as the overarching policy piece. Title II said you had to make your programs accessible. So programs still included playgrounds, for example. But there wasn't a book that you could 
go to that would tell you what an accessible playground would look like until 2010. Um, so this, this is part of what the Department of Justice calls the program access test. The, the features or the assets or the activities that you have at the golf course are what have to be accessible. Uh, there is language in the ADA about whether making changes to an existing site are technically infeasible. So technical infeasibility arises in a building when to get to the primary use area, and I think that that's at play here, uh, you have to move or remove a load-bearing wall or element. So you could argue that you could leave that site the way it is, but you still have the overarching golf and the activities we have there have to be compliant. So they tend to conflict with each other a bit. Technical infeasibility, according to the Department of Justice, is something that you are supposed to rarely find. It's clearly the exception. It's not intended to be the rule. Um, so I told you I'd mention a couple of examples. We have a Illinois Park District that had an old swimming pool that was built in the 1930s or 40s. Uh, there wasn't a single thing about the pool that was accessible. A uh, family filed a complaint. They wanted their son to use the mobility device to be able to swim during the summer. Uh, Attorney General's Office picked it up. The Illinois Attorney General's Office through the Disability Rights Bureau does enforce both Illinois and federal requirements in this regard. Uh, the AG's office made the park district. They agreed to let them keep, this is an important piece of this, keep the pool open for the rest of the year with the agreement that the new community center that was going to have an indoor pool would be uber accessible. Every feature about it would be fully compliant. And the park district took that deal and they ran their inaccessible swimming pool for the rest of the year and then closed it when the indoor pool was ready to open and raised it. So there are examples like that regarding marinas as well as fitness facilities and old repurposed park district buildings as well. Um, so speaking of the Attorney General, when Ron and I were talking about this a couple years ago, as I said, I called the Disability Rights Bureau person and I said, hey, I've got a hypothetical for you. What if a park district had a non-compliant golf course clubhouse and they were considering in two years either raising it or replacing it or doing something completely different to it. If you got a complaint from a citizen today about that course and the park district told you that within two years they were going to make a decision, would you let them ride it out and make a decision? And she asked, well, why couldn't they accelerate the schedule and why couldn't they uh, redirect funds? And I persuaded her in the hypothetical that that those just weren't available options. And she said she'd let it go. That if somebody did file a complaint, she'd say, we're going to watch it for two years. And the park district at the end, with the promise that the new golf course clubhouse uh, would be compliant, would be satisfactory for her. Clearly what she wasn't willing to do, and I should caution you here, every ADA complaint is different. The Attorney General's office uh, makes it really clear that it's an agreement between the park district that's in the settlement agreement with that versus uh, precedent setting a trial court decision or appeals court decision. So if the clock had started at that conversation, the two years is up later this year. So your, your options here are to try to figure out what are we going to do with this existing building that is non-compliant and is there a way that you can satisfy the Title II requirements which tell you that the game of golf, the program of golf that you're running here does have to be accessible. So how are you going to do that with that asset? Uh, raise it, replace it, uh, alter it. All of those are contemplated by Title II, the part of the ADA that applies to the district. So those are all options that you have, in my opinion, I'm not giving the legal advice, but just my opinion from 
seeing other jurisdictions go through this, one of the choices that we've never seen work is not do anything to the site. Um, I just don't think that that's a viable choice for you. Uh, even today, Ron and I met at 5.15 at the beach. The beach is very, very different than the golf course clubhouse. The golf course clubhouse is a human constructed facility. The beach is not. Uh, there's very little that you have in the way of recourse to make the path down to the beach compliant. It's just not going to happen. It's the perfect example of something that really is technically infeasible. Um, I don't think the golf course clubhouse is the perfect example of technical infeasibility. So I promised I would stop around there and either answer some questions from you or listen to any subsequent discussion. Could I answer your questions? Have we had a complaint that the thoughts post ADA anything? No. Yeah. I don't know. So your hypothetical to the um, the Attorney General or to whoever you spoke to. Did the did the two year period start when you had the complaint or it's it just that's where I'm no. There wasn't a complaint, so. Okay. So there can't be a complaint today and give us another two years. I'm uh, just asking. That wasn't the conversation that we had. I'm not going to say that that couldn't be the outcome. Yet. But that wasn't no, the I, conversation. I, I, that we just, had. just asking. No, it's a good question. It's a good question. It's a good question. So, um, so I understand you correctly. All asset categories have to comply unless technically infeasible. It's not just that the majority of our programs as part of the park district or the majority of our pro, you know facilities and so forth are compliant. It's really specific to every different type. Yes. So again, type for you, playgrounds are a type, sports fields are a type, baseball fields are a type. The pool is a type. The beach is a type. Golf is a type. So we can't pool it with something else. As no, and as you can't outdoor recreation or something. No, and you can't count somebody else's. So if the school district had compliant playgrounds, you couldn't count that jurisdiction because that's a separate local government. You've got to look at your playgrounds within the park district as its own separate special group. Could. We've seen this. You could enter into reciprocal agreements. That might be something to talk about, but I'm trying to think. We've done some work for some of the other jurisdictions in your neck of the woods, and I think you're going to run into golf access issues in some of those. But it's certainly something that could be a solution. Are you saying the Borough Lake Forest Park District? Is that what you're referring Well. Or have an agreement with? It's, it's something to consider. What the Department of Justice would like to see and what the Illinois Attorney General's Office likes is a plan. They don't want, we're not going to do it to be the answer. They want instead, we're not going to do it, but here's what we're going to do instead, and here's how that complies with the choices that you get in Title II. Is there a, is there like a doing this part way? I mean, the numbers we've heard to be fully compliant are pretty stagnant. I mean, they're, they're a lot. Like, Ron, what was the 800,000. 800, yeah, could we, like, in good faith, do something toward that? Um, would that help us? Well, yeah. Sure. It has to help. Right, but, but here's the question. Better than but here's the question. Do you want to spend 100,000 on that building? when we've all talked about the ultimate fate of that building is probably get replaced with something that would be ADA compliant. So are we, are we just spending money that's very quickly going to be spent and gone away? That's, that's the rug we're in right now. I mean, it's kind of like redoing your parking lot before you redo a building. You're going to wind up tearing up the parking lot when you redo the right. building. So again, like I said, Having a plan is really important. You used a key phrase, acting in good faith is really important. Um, 
that's, that really counts if somebody does file a complaint. So the two key hurdles with that building is accessibility from the exterior getting in and washroom accessibility. I just put my head in there again tonight before coming over here to refresh my recollection. Pictures don't do uh, that site justice, so it would be difficult. It would be challenging, and it's on a mound. Uh, so having an, an exterior entry to the restrooms might be feasible, but I'm sure there would be other issues involved there. So one of the reasons why we wanted to bring John out is if, if the board decides to continue with Pro 19 or beyond, is we have to address the building at some point in time. And so if it gets to January 1, we're scrambling with what to do. So um, I don't think we're looking for tonight on those answers, but early knowledge for you some options. So this is really more informational. For yes. And yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I totally got a thought of saying these cards. I mean, I hate to throw good money up for bad if, if that building is going away and being replaced. It's a whole issue of timing. <laughs> I mean, could, could we have set up for ADA accessible a check-in, for example, here at the rec center for golf, if that was the case, and, and a golfer came, and we said, we have the ability, we have the point of sale system, you can go check in there. Is that to, in the interim? You, you could go think about if you were doing construction at the site. So if you were doing construction over at the golf course clubhouse, You'd make arrangements like that for a limited period of time. You'd have a temporary check-in. You'd have use of the restrooms maybe here in the center. Uh, it's probably not a great long-term No, solution. I don't think we're trying to do long-term here because long-term right. we've got to do something very different with that building. I'll tell you what we usually tell our clients, though, when they are considering that course of action is close the part that's not accessible. So everybody one, in the right, that's one of the key ADA requirements okay. is that all right. we so all gotcha. use the same place. Okay, gotcha. Mm. Okay. You're not, otherwise it may be like segregating. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. And the bottom line is, from a building code standpoint, that's a public assembly building and you, know, you, you have to make it not accessible to the public. Well, and especially with food there, you have to, you can't close off a portion of it like the restrooms, as well as food being served there. Yeah, because, Ron, you, you check with Mike Croke on Mike Croke is yeah, stated that if we close the bathroom, we technically can't close the bathrooms over in the clubhouse because we've got, we've got food. food. Well, and Mike Croke is, uh, is the head of the building department here in the okay. club, you know, the code supervisor. He confirmed. That, I'm sorry, in the gun, he was saying that if we close, we can't close the bathrooms. If as long as you're going to serve food. As long as you're going to serve food. But if we just have the check in pro shop over there, um, I guess it, we, we still have to have washrooms for the employees, but not accessible to the public. I, is that a question that my well, colleagues might be able to? There's, I mean, there are a host of other problems. I mean, the entrance itself is, uh, would, would take quite a bit to retrofit for accessibility. Number one, number two, even employee-only spaces, the restrooms are to be treated as a public space. So they have to meet the same requirements that they're being used by a member of the general public. So you don't really gain anything there. So we've mm -hmm. seen other jurisdictions get temporary accessible restrooms or portable toilets that are nice stuff and 
use those and put them out on an asphalt pad near the clubhouse and, and close the restrooms in the clubhouse. That's been a solution that some have pursued. Could we, in the meantime, just kind of create a reciprocal partnership with Lake Forest? So if somebody needed, if they were ADA, we could offer them, just talk to Lake Forest and say, would you allow them to use their pass or whatever it is that they purchase here over there? Like I said, it's a possibility. I think you'd have to, if you're going to enter into that kind of an arrangement, everything over there should better be compliant. Certainly parking, the exterior accessible route, yeah. uh, the clubhouse, yeah. golf as well. So I think the top of that is determine a long term solution. Right. right. I mean this might be the kind of thing that requires a couple of different approaches. Maybe a let's take some good faith steps that we can do with the building itself. Let's explore options with neighboring golf courses. All the while figuring out what it is. Two years from now, looks like. And, okay, so we've got a lot of scenarios we've got to sort through and I think we have to assess risk, how much risk the park district is willing to take. Um, but a timeline on um, with December 31st, when we back up from that, um, we've really got to kick this plan in and Ed and I were talking about this. Is if it gets to start to get to December and we're trying to find a trailer and we're trying to, it's it, we might not have something open in time. We, and so we should probably have some plan or strategy by midsummer, I would guess. That'd be early fall. Yeah. But John, if, let's let's just play this out. We're, we get to your end. We found out we're going to be open in 19. So we move toward uh, some kind of a temporary. <clears throat> we're actually moving toward that. We've got a plan. We're installing the pad or whatever we've got to do. Would that be? Would you stand and argue for us that that's good faith? We're putting this in. Let us leave that clubhouse open until May 31st, and we're going to move everything over there in June 1st. Sure. I mean, I mean, the more that you're doing, okay. Yes. Okay. Because yeah. that might be the way to do that, and then we can make that decision in your end, get after it. Maybe we already have the plans, Ron. Maybe we need to start thinking about where the pad would be for the new thing and how we're going to do it. And then we'd, we'd have some time next year to get that done and just use the existing clubhouse and then transition over. Can I make a comment to Commissioner McHenry? The scenario of trying to partner with somebody else? Mm -hmm. It's a much more saleable option if you don't limit it to people with disabilities. So say I'm a Lake Bluff resident, period, and I can go play at another course that is accessible. So it really would be stronger if it's both. If it is no, but I wanted to give them free golf there, too. I was going to give them free. Good luck in the edit, dear man. Don't worry about it. offer to all residents. <laughs> all residents, yeah. Free all for everybody. No. That's your best. Okay. Did right. you see the point, though? <laughs> right. That's your best. On Lake Forest. But we already have reciprocity with Lake Forest. It's but I don't know if it's in an actual agreement. I don't think that's part of Right now, it's about programs. You can just be. Something we should probably look at. Yeah, that's a good point. And I'm, I'm just thinking in the back of my head with the, um, if we have a temporary facility um, somewhere relatively close to that building, um, and I know a little bit of code stuff, and I know that you think it's 125 feet you have to have from food, where food's being served to get into the washroom. So if we can kind of get those pieces linked together and we can then find a location that kind of meets that requirement. But I, there's a lot of planning that needs to be okay. done here and I think, but I, I guess I, I don't want to have you boxed in at the last second so it sounds like we really should. Least some flexibility, I think that was a good question. That, 
helps us a little bit. Right. Think through for opening on 19 and make a decision. You might have a little more time. And have a little bit more time. March 1st. That's a little bit better. Okay. That's much better. Okay. So, but we should try to get something sorted out here in the next eight weeks. Well, I think it would. I think anything we could do that, that we're planning for would be, to your point, a positive thing. Yeah, and stay out in front right. as much as we can. Right. Versus getting into a reactionary. We know position. we have an issue. We want to deal with it. We just got to figure out how to do it, given kind of all the variables we're looking at. So what might be good is that a committee, the whole meeting for all of you to discuss what options for staff okay. to move forward with. So when I guessing on whatever one maybe wants to do. So that would be helpful. Okay. Whether it's okay. some type of agreement, whether it's modular, whatever the case is, that would be helpful. Okay. Do you have other questions, anyone? Very helpful. Thanks, Thanks Scott. Uh, we really, really appreciate all your help on the Thanks for time. Well, no, slow down. I am now going to open it to the floor for public comment. Don't worry, we're not forgetting anyone. So, um, any public comments on this whole uh, discussion on ADA with the clubhouse? <coughs> George? I am George Russell. I'm a resident at the 448 Gurney Avenue. Uh, I'm here as a resident, not as a Park and Beach Committee member. Um, Franz, first of all, I've never publicly thanked you because was very close to running for the uh, board position when one opened up last time. And it's, it's so much more fun to be in the peanut gallery than up there <laughs> on an issue like this. I didn't know. So thank you very much. <laughs> Not for long, George. Not for thank you. You can join us at some point. Not close. Uh, I think one of my major questions was, in my, so in my own mind, I've been trying to look at this clubhouse thing. If I was on the board, what would I want to know? And so I, I want. I urge all of you to, to think about these things. And what, one of my biggest questions was, what has there been an ADA complaint filed? And there apparently has not been. Um, I know somebody alluded to the fact that there are other problems with other, other facilities. And I'm still trying to get my hands around why, um, if the warming house doesn't have an ADA complaint door, if the uh, paddle hut perhaps doesn't have an ADA compliant door for access, why do those items not have the same, same sense of urgency as the clubhouse? Not just from an ADA compliancy perspective, not the whole issue of the golf course closing. So that's one thing. Um, the other um, big issue is that there doesn't seem to be any middle ground um, discussion on the clubhouse, you know, if the ADA compliance issues, and I'm not arguing we need to fix access to the clubhouse. I was very confused by the consultant's letter because it sounded like when it was written that the consultant bought the pro shop and the concession group on the second floor talking about vertical access up or an elevator going into the facility. The only thing on the lower below grade level is the lockers, and I would think that could be solved simply by putting a couple lockers for ADA uh, players up in the pro shop. Um, the front door can certainly, um, the ramps uh, can certainly be made ADA compliant. Um, I would certainly think if there's going to be a serious analysis of looking at the clubhouse and if the clubhouse is to be saved, that we consider putting an addition, a uh, small addition on the, the uh, north side of the clubhouse, just to the east of the current front door, like a 12 by 12 addition that could be a co fully compliant um, ADA um, bathroom. Um, built for far, far less than $800,000. Um, I'm confused by some of the items in the consultant's report, not this particular letter. Um, the concessions, it's recommended that the whole area where you go up to the counter and order your food, that, that should be lowered um, for someone with a disability to be able to go up to a low counter. Mm -hmm. um, our counter up in the fitness center where many, many, many more thousands of people walk up to you every day is a high counter all the way around that. So I'm th thinking that doesn't have any access either. So I'm, those are some of the issues that I'm trying to, to understand why 
it's all focused on the, the clubhouse and no discussion on all of our other issues in terms of a very strict January 2019 compliance. Thanks. Right. 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 Thank you. I hope you didn't count my time. I just spent thank you in France. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, George. Thank you, George. Uh, any other comments? Uh, <coughs> um, Colette asks, and again, you guys mentioned risk tolerance in this discussion, but then didn't really get back to it. So I would just ask you to look at risk tolerance. So um, since there haven't been any complaints, some of the scenarios that were mentioned were having a plan if a complaint were made. Um, maybe having some of these scenarios say if there were a complaint, we can, you know, we have the reciprocal set up. If there was a complaint, then we can have an area that there's a bathroom shutdown. If there was a complaint, we might be able to move operations to the rec center building so that there are some other alternatives rather than just saying, we're going to make a pad, we're going to build this, um, which is funds that aren't available right now. Um, and then just even things like food. I know the food can be delivered for everyone. I think that's been talked about before, of having the food services even possibly being delivered to the pool. So that would be available for everybody if the food services were an issue. I just think, you know, there might be a lot of things and scenarios that can be thought of and discussed in brainstorms in one of your meetings and maybe in between as you write them down without having to take an action step and more planning um, for the risk level. You know, the risk is pretty low right now, not that we don't want to make these changes as a community, but we just can't do them all at once, as you had mentioned, Ron. Um, you know, kind of having a plan of an if then scenario. Thank you. Any other comments? I have actually a comment and a question. CID Swift, I live at 185 Lancaster Court. And there were some comments that I heard about through 2019. Has a decision been made that the course would stay open through 2019? No, it was just hypothetical that I was hearing that date out there tonight? Well, it, this isn't really answer, question okay. answer. Well, I was just, okay, no, just asking because my question is no, this, no. that with the ADA uh, comments that we heard tonight about the review, if you have two years from the time of a complaint, it kind of seems irrelevant that we be focusing on ADA at this point because if the course closes, it's completely a non-issue. So to focus on that doesn't really seem to warrant the attention it's getting. I don't know, I'm just saying that. So when could it's very low risk. Couldn't we wait till there was a complaint? And then follow up because you have two years from the time of a complaint, or did I totally miss the vote on that? Once you address it, that's a, I'll come back. Yeah, one shot back. Yeah. We'll just, uh, after she's done. Yeah, we're, we're done with um, comments. We're going to come back to that. <coughs> we can come back. Okay, yes. thank you. Any other um, comments from anyone? Well, um, John, um, are there some comments here or questions that you feel comfortable addressing? Um, sure. Okay. Just two quick ones uh, in regard to the last question. Uh, I'm sorry if I gave that impression, but there's not a, a two-year period that begins when the complaint is filed. I had just used that as an example in the hypothetical when I talked to the Attorney General's office. So typically, both for U.S. Department of Justice settlement agreements and Illinois Attorney General's office settlement agreements, you have very, very few options once the complaint is filed and you start negotiating with the enforcement staff and they want you to do things much more quickly than two years. We've, uh, again, the Illinois Park District client that had to redo their swimming facilities, they're in their ninth year of addressing compliance at all of their sites. It's, so it's not something that waiting is a benefit for you. No, I wasn't saying Okay, I'm, 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 I'm sorry if I misheard you. Uh, 
and I think it might have heard part of yours wrong too, but I wasn't trying to say that it's a good practice that you should have a plan and then when a complaint arises you implement the plan. You should have a plan and be implementing it so that when the complaint arises you can use it, for lack of a better term, kind of as a shield and show that you're acting in good faith. But those yeah. decisions are all based on risk tolerance, correct? Sure, but that is part of the other issue here. That's why I made the point of talking about 1992 to 1995. The golf course should have been addressed 23 years ago. Yeah, that, that makes sense. However, when we're in a situation where we don't know if the golf club's even going to be open, that, you know, the risk tolerance plus no complaints goes lower. And definitely, I mean, I'm in a business where we also look at government needs and ADA and a variety of other, but it's always looking at what your plan and working towards that plan versus your risk tolerance and layering those over top of each other instead of just trying to make decisions and implement them all at once. Um, you know, look at your options, weigh them, and then timeline based on financial feasibility and the ability to make that happen. It's a bigger discussion, I'm sure, for all of you than just tonight. Well, I guess my only question If a complaint came in, and um, I mean, obviously we got to have money set aside for legal fees and dealing with all of that. I mean, it's it's going to be an expense that we would have to have kind of a retainer sitting off to the side. I would assume um, if we're willing to take risks like that. I mean, uh, is that a fair? Statement to make. I mean, so that'd have, be cheap because you're going to have to hire. Get, we would be involved in the process. I, I think you use our firm to work to negotiate with um, the, the accessibility division of the AG's office to, to get that resolved. So there could be expenses outside of the physical work that you would have to do yeah. for sure. So it's 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 a matter of how much risk is the part just not willing to take. And I think these are things we're going to have to assess. So well, yeah, I, 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 just don't, I just don't think a good plan is to sit around and wait till we get a claim and then try to figure it out. I, I, I mean, as a board member, that plan does not sit well with me when we're talking about a, a federal line. I mean, that's just... And I think one of the things, George, Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong, but the fact that we have a third party in the golf clubhouse is part of what has created this because somebody else is operating in there, or am I wrong? Well, we had to do it anyway. I mean, right, but I mean, I think George was asking about why the golf over some other things, and it's because I thought it was partly because yeah. we have an outside independent party in that clubhouse functioning. And we're trying to figure under out where, a the, contract where the liability Yeah, there's, there's, there's a piece in the ADA that addresses that the ADA prohibits a unit of local government from using taxpayer dollars to enter into a partnership with an entity that's going to discriminate. So it kind of depends on how okay. much control your future course operator has. But I think a thing to be aware of from an Illinois Accessibility Code perspective is that the park district, park district is prohibited from entering into a rental or lease agreement for a site that is not compliant. So that's been pretty broadly interpreted. It's come up before with other Illinois clients and the Illinois Attorney General's office has said they would view it the same whether you're the lessee or the lessor. So that might be something contract-wise for you all. Well, with this RFP out for a lease, that changes this dynamic. Well, we, we did, I discussed that with them during the mandatory meeting. So right. Yeah, right. I outlined to them about the issues with the ADA. Right. Absolutely, we had to do that. So that okay. was really important to do that. Yep. Okay. And they didn't understand what was what was involved. I think the other issue is that there, the clubhouse has other construction needs yeah. of some kind. <coughs> I've heard that these may trigger 
you know, ADA compliance, but sometimes, so if you make a, you know, some renovations to the clubhouse, but don't address ADA, are, are we at greater risk than where we are today? Or are we, are they both risky? I, I think they're both risky. I think not addressing it, uh, I don't want to call it a fatal flaw, but I think not addressing it with some kind of a combination. Well, especially after a public discussion in that. Well, <laughs> I mean, let's. I think it's yeah. a discussion you've been having for a while. <laughs> well, let me say, I just, okay, I want to just draw an analogy to the issue with our trees that we were working with, with Rob. So we had trees all over, we have trees all over the park district land that needed to come down because they're dying or they're sick. And we said, well, let's go after the trees that need it the most or the trees that are in the high risk areas like at a park, Artesian Park, okay? So why aren't we approaching this ADA where I'm sure, I'm just going to use this number as an example. If there's 50 items where we're not compliant, throughout the whole entire park district, okay? I'm just giving this as an example. And we, we start putting them in order of priority. So maybe a bathroom park or something like that, or a ramp we're missing somewhere. Of course, I think that's, we have that. You have been doing But if we have that, I'm with George thinking, like if this is throughout the whole entire park district, why wouldn't we have the golf clubhouse towards the bottom because of the fact that we might not have a golf clubhouse in two years. And when if, in, when, if they complain, you would say, listen, we have a list of 50 and we've, we've done 13 of the items. But it wouldn't make sense for us to throw money away and work on a golf clubhouse that could be torn down in a year or two. So I'm, I'm kind of, with George's like, there's all these areas where I'm compliant why would we focus on the building that might not even exist? We did that work for you in 2010. So that was eight okay. years ago. I so why can't we, we just take the money we have and start shopping away at it? So when they come to us, we say, well, we're working on it. We've been working on it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. And every, I know that because yeah. I know we did that at the parks. Every single but, year. But another thing, John, it would show that we are mm -hmm. working on it as a whole entire park district. We only have so much money. Already, we've been doing that every yeah. year. So, right. So, I mean, even uh, was it two summers ago we redid the, the entrance mm -hmm. building? It's still a signage with Braille. Or we yeah, have, it's, we're doing what we It's do. happening every year. No, I know, I know it is. But what I'm saying is, John, if you were, if we got a complaint, could you say, well, listen, the Park District has been working on these items. They're on number 32 of 50. Well, we, we always do. I mean, we give you a phased retrofit recommendation. So it's it's in there. But if it's at 32, it's gonna jump to number one if there's a complaint. Right. Right. Yeah, that's the right. If there's a complaint. But I'm what I'm thinking is if there's not a complaint, maybe there's not an issue. I, well, I just uh, uh, to me it's not a good strategy, but that's me personally. But it's on the list. It's just that we're going we prioritize just like the trees. Is, it, is the clubhouse a priority when we might be tearing it down or replacing it? I think it's exactly the opposite of the way you phrased it. I think it is an issue. You just don't have a complaint yet. Okay. And the other risk I see is if we have to do work in there, let's say a complaint, hypothetically, a complaint comes in, we then have to start modifying the entrance coming in and doing something else in there that's going to which will require building permits, and that building doesn't have sprinklers in it. Would, would the village then pull the trigger and say, okay, you've got enough sprinkler in the salt water? You know, um, so there, there's a domino effect that could occur that is a high risk from my standpoint. So I think the good faith approach is what we need to be looking at here so we can show that we're we're making efforts around that building in some form. I don't know what it is yet, but I think we've kind of hammered this down pretty hard so for the moment. I, we're going to have to come back with some strategies, and I I don't think we can figure them out here right now, but um, but we do need to roll our sleeves up and come up with a game plan for this, this building, short-term, 
and long term. Long term is harder to define right now, but at least we have, we have a short term window that we've got to be proactive about. Uh, so we stay in front of it and not get stuck behind and getting in a reactionary position. And, and then we've got legal bills and everything else hitting us, which we really don't have the money to do. <laughs> so, um, are we in agreement that go to the committee the whole meeting and just discuss a little bit more and John doesn't need to be here? Yeah, I think, just be, I think you well educated. We're going to have to educate the two other board members. But I agree. I think our committee as a whole, and then we can have some outlines of different approaches. Yeah, it could be July. Sort through all this. Okay. And you give you a chance to think through things. And what we can do is, if you have more of your thoughts, send them my way, and I can send them over to John, and John can put something up for us. So, so this was. Kind but, of a, okay. From my standpoint, this is actually can get really complicated if we don't stay up in front of it. That, that's the risk I see. Well, we're started on it, so yeah, that's yeah. the start. So. Right. And I think we should look at the full plan and the full list again. Yes. Some of us have you know, yeah. well, that, well, that predated you. Right. I remember it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was quite a document. And uh, I've got a very... So the whole ADP plan or just for the clubhouse? No, like <clears throat> Park District ADP okay. plan, right? Because okay. so we're responsible for it all. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So can you take us back? Take to us, the whole... Just take a look at what we've done. Okay. You know, what we said, what our plan has been. Um, in the, and obviously both is part of it. Yeah. But I think, yeah, it's just wide. It was, it was a big spreadsheet, like a one by seven yeah. spreadsheet. Yeah, okay. That yeah. makes sense. So instead of focusing on the clubhouse, also educating everyone. Well, mm -hmm. so let's get the big picture and then we can zero in on the clubhouse. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, John. You. Thanks, John. Okay, well, so we will continue that at a meeting, the whole meeting. Uh, Good, we'll we'll another meeting. Well, yeah. yeah. We like hanging out together so much. Um, next item is the community group guidelines discussion. Yeah, I mean, I know it's a bit late for everyone, but I think it is important that we uh, we go through kind of somewhat of a discussion with, that we just did with ADA. And just, uh, working on some <coughs> guidelines for community groups. And this really came about, it was, it's been a good opportunity in understanding what, what we've done in the past with community groups. And it, what really triggered this is when the foundation, they really decided to do some, some guidelines related to community groups coming to them. And I just said, well, you know, I think that's a great start. And, you know, wonder if there's something for the park district just done some things not from a policy standpoint we just said hey this works this works and so then I was thinking and there's kind of three things going on here is what about the future we've talked about the state park we've talked about Blair Park tennis courts brought that up in the public meetings and then um, I have people with pickleball saying why can't we do pickleball so we're going to continue to have community groups taking a look at all of our assets or even programs. It could be the beach, it could be a variety of other things. And so uh, why not put some guidelines together? This is a complete draft form. You know, within two, three days, we tried to put some things together. It says on there, friends, it was, we just took some of their information and then we tweaked it, so that has to get tweaked. It's not a friend's document, it's our document. The other thing is we've received some great questions from the current uh, golf association and so we wanted to address that tonight. How do we formalize that? Does it, we at one point in time put Rob and Franz together, then it was Chris and Franz, and then what gets approved by the board and what gets approved by the executive director? I think if we can establish some guidelines and expectations, I think that will help and also not put board members uh, in the decision making that the rest of the board members are saying, well, when did that happen and why did that occur? So, uh, uh, so, so hence, I, I thought I would start first with the four community groups and their specific fundraising projects and what we've done. I think that's, that should be helpful. So we, the preschool, 
So a lot of this, these four have been centered around building improve, building and capital improvements. So really mostly focused on fundraising to go get something. And so preschool, what we do is we sit down with the, the parents and we talk with them and we tell them, here's all the things that we need. Uh, we need uh, and hey, can you help us volunteer hours at the fun fair? So there are more type of things that are kind of the small cap items, I guess, this is the best for eight, under $10,000, but there are things over $10,000 as well, but related to preschool within that window of small cap. The paddle tents, a group came to us and said, hey, we really need a fourth court, uh, as well as the association said, hey, in order for you to have more teams, you need a fourth court. Uh, this board said to that group, listen, we can only give you so much, you need to fundraise, and they went out and they fundraised on their own. We did some publicity for them. We would say, hey, we're looking at a fourth court. We had sent things out in our e-blast. Uh, they did a lot of most of the work, talking to their members, spent a lot of time on, on uh, themselves just trying to, to generate dollars, and, and that money flowed over to the foundation. Right now, they, they need to pay back that fourth court. They have one year, they believe, to finish, and they are looking at a canopy. It's a building improvement that they would say, hey, hey, members, any outside sponsors of some sort, we need your help with this. They would get approved by the board ahead of time. The ski club, ski club came to the park district first and said, hey, we'd like to do X, Y, and Z. Do we need the equipment? Friends did say, okay, we like that because it's small in nature for us. That's about all we can handle. And so it was a three-way partnership. There were things that we publicized, they publicized on their Facebook, we publicized and to get the word out to for uh, donations to go through the friends. Then we had friends of Lake Bluff Parks Foundation where they purely fundraised on their own for a specific asset, the pool stairs and the beach. Susan was instrumental with that, uh, working with the foundation. And that was a lot of messaging on their own. So they went out, they sell them raffle tickets, things like that. So, uh, that took them three years. So uh, so there were some, some things that we were able to do and help out, but a lot of times they did things on their own. And it really focused on building, building the capital that seemed to be the focus. But what we were thinking is what I can envision, and there's probably 10 different scenarios, but a pickleball group come and saying, hey, we'd love to see two quarts of pickleball. And you say, well, do we really need that? And we're back and forth, well, we want to fundraise, or we want to help you promote. And how do we get that? And now we're trying to figure out where to go, who's doing what, and where are we at? So hence why, again, put some guidelines together. I didn't think we were gonna have a long discussion about this because this is just a preliminary draft. I would add something in there which I think would be helpful is a section on acknowledgement. Uh, didn't put that in there, but I think it's a good idea that how do we recognize people when they do contribute as a park district. So is it a letter? We really don't have a process for that, but that should be in the guidelines. Uh, the friends. They do letters from a tax donation standpoint. You know, is there something that the park district wants to recognize for their efforts of fundraising and individuals who actually put money, money towards one of our building, uh, one of our assets, and, or one of our programs? So that would be something good to get in here that's not in here currently. So I thought I would start there in terms of what you thought about the draft, and then get into more specifics in terms of some requests by the Golf Association, which I think we can address. So. So if we can go first, if you like the idea of these guidelines so that as a board, you understand kind of the parameters and the practices that what we've done in the past as well as what we want to do in the future. If any group wants to come forward, it could be a dog park, it could be something else, it could be trails, it could be a plan, you name it. Um, but some guidelines, otherwise we're pulled in a lot of different directions, board members are pulled in a lot of different directions, and it'd be good to get a general sense of how everyone would like to, to uh, work together on this. It reminds me of the organizational spreadsheet you put together years ago, or the community and the categories, and the uses come in terms of 
rectangle. This room or rectangle each to have some sort of organizational um, format, right? It would be very helpful to you and to your staff. It goes through, does it go through the committee? Does it go through committee of the whole? Does it, what does the board want to see? Do they want to see all messaging going across? Is the park district doing the, the messaging and, and flyers? So I don't know if I just got Yeah, I think when Ron and I had talked about this bit, that, that you want to make sure you have a target in mind that, that the board has proved and giving a clear message to your staff so that the staff is then communicating that to the uh, third party group. If it's simply take the ball and run with it and bring back money and to build a court, that's one thing, but it, there could be other components and, and it needs to come from the board to staff to lead from staff to the group. So that's what I've seen in other, in, in other park districts that we represent and in municipalities where, where issues like this have come. Still have more to work with. I mean, do you like the general framework? I guess. And there's more in terms of the idea of putting something together. I guess. Yeah, I think we have to define where staff is spending its time. I think that's really important right now. I mean, the, the issues we have are are many. So um, I think we have to be really careful. On that. So. I agree. Because you guys, if we could just, everyone could get started too thin, because I've had people approach me about pickleball, dog parks, so many different things, and it's like if we start accepting all these groups and then say that you guys are supposed to work with all of them, there's just not enough time in the day. That's well said right there, because the foundation has said there's only so much we can do, and said to the groups, we need you to fundraise. Not us. So that's an excellent point, Corey. I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. And so then we could be having four or five different community groups coming in here. Can we get this? Can we do this? And yeah, and the level of involvement by staff could vary, right? Depending on what it is, depending on this, whether it's a priority or not a priority, right? I might further add, um, I'm a big believer in our committee structure. I think for the most part it's been working great, um, allowing committees to do a lot of this work. Uh, it's certainly on uh, the responsibilities of the park district oversight policy, forming and then report to the board. Um, and in this current situation with the Golf Association, um, we had our um, committee with Franz and Chris, um, and I, I commend you guys for what you've been doing, but it's demanding. I mean, we all have lives beyond here, <laughs> and um, I believe because of the importance and the magnitude of the whole golf course discussion, um, that really needs to move into a committee as a whole uh, context uh, as far as discussion. I think matters regarding the golf course really should be full board interaction on that. Um, it's too much to be asking a committee to carry that weight. I think it's just too much of a burden. Because right? um, you've got other responsibilities in those committees to, uh, because first and foremost, we are a park district and we're district wide. We have, you know, everything from a aquatic facility to a beach to playgrounds to Blair Park to Artesian Park to a golf course to a fitness center. I mean, there's a lot of pieces. And 1,100 of them. Yeah, well, and all the uh, <laughs> programs we have here, right, over 1,100 programs within the rec center itself here. Um, so I think moving forward, at least with the golf discussion, I would encourage us to really take that as a community as a whole not as individual committees handling that. It's just, it's too, too big. There's yeah. something on these guidelines in terms of, I mean, that's a decision that the board makes based on... On a case-by-case case case basis. basis. Because, because it gets discussed, you know, where should be... Because certainly, let's take for Friends of the Parks when they built the, uh, the stairs, the all the in for the stairs on the beach, and, um, and they contributed money toward the... Uh, 
stairs. The structure down there too, I believe, didn't they? The stairs. And um, yeah. you know that they really kind of navigated that pretty nicely on their own with some oversight from staff, but it wasn't really a big time demand or a demand. But um, the golf course is a complicated subject. It's got a lot of moving pieces in it, and I think that's where. It's, it's too big for a committee. I, I will say staff was still involved quite a bit. Oh, yeah. Running the, uh, the block party and helping on that. So, yeah, it was exhausting. And that's when the friends decided to retool and go through some strategic planning saying, we can't, we're not, we're not going to be large enough to fundraise. So that's where we want community groups. Susan, <laughs> we were working nights, and, and they, that's where they said, it's best if groups can do that. We will be the pass through. We will help when we can, but we have limited funds as well. So, um, I, you know, I was just thinking of something as you know, maybe that's something we look at as level of partnerships and community groups or something like that, so that we identify where staffs involved, where where the boards involved, and it's never going to be as black and white clear cut. But maybe there's some scenarios or something there that we can staff and we can you know, look through is it going to be as large as the golf if it's something about the beach I mean just let's think of we, we talk about the breakwaters and there's some people that say we don't want the breakwaters and there's a community group that says we don't want them no, we want the beach the way it is but we're saying hey we want to head in this direction how do we how do we work with that group so you're looking for guidelines some guidelines and, and I and I I agree that you need guidelines, and I think that, that I'm with you. That we, as staff, we do want to help. I mean, I right. think there are instances where we absolutely want to be a part of a community group trying to help out one of our programs, facilities, or services. It's just at what level. Right. So. I mean, I would compare this to a school and a PTO. You know, the PTO had a fundraiser at the golf course and on Saturday. And parents got together and planned the fundraiser. And they invited the teachers and the principal to participate. But the teachers and the principal, they weren't actually running the fundraiser. It's like if this is if these are the teachers and the principal, they can get involved at the level they can, but the parents and the organizers, the community organizers are running it. They're not asking the teachers to do the work. I don't know, it's my comparison. Because the teachers can't, be. they're with the kids. They have too little time. The staff has too little time. There's like 1,000 things going on. 1,100. 1,100, <laughs> well it feels like 11,000. But 1,100 programs. So it's, they might be able to you know, spread the word and help where they can, but it's not the responsibility um, of the park district to run a community effort. Great. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. At least I have some general direction here. Um, we have to continue to work through the guidelines. I mean, there's funding requests, you know, how much funding comes from the park district, and that's a big topic. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, <coughs> This light list one seems to be about email communication and privacy, you know, and so if people are trying to promote, you know, how do how does communi how's communication supposed to happen if you know the information resides, you know, in one repository. So I mean that's something that maybe we need to brainstorm a little bit about, right? In terms of um, rights and privacy and access. Right. And just under the Freedom of Information Act, email addresses are considered private. If people submit their, their email address for whatever purpose they believe that is coming in, um, the, the Attorney General takes the position that that is private information that somebody has, has given to you that isn't to be disclosed. There's other things that are to be disclosed, but the email address right now is, is still considered private information. Um, so then you get into the instance of a, a some type of disclaimer uh, that we may provide your email address to other people if you give it to us, so then people are stop giving their email addresses because everyone knows that you get too many already. So yeah, but what's considered other people, 
right? If the purpose is to fundraise for an asset of the park district, right? I, I is, is there is that, there a difference or not? They, that's a, something that you have to decide whether you want to. If, if, is there going to be a backlash because that, that people are doing that? And you can give it out, but do you then want to tell people that you're going to provide that to affiliated entities? Um, if you registered for, if you had a, a youth lacrosse program and, and some other group wants to recruit kids that play lacrosse in the area. Right. Are, are you going to give it to them if they ask for it? So, so where do you draw the line? Right. Or somebody who wants to, or someone who to run something counter to what we were trying to accomplish right. and said, "Well, I want your email addresses because I don't like what you guys are doing." Right. And, and that's, so, so I think we need to think about that as well, part of this. Yeah. So we open because, ourselves up to everything. Because, yeah, right. Because it, like, who gets it and who doesn't? Right. Right. So somebody that says we can do it better. I, I didn't like the program that you ran. We've actually had this in places where they're like, well, we're just going to steal your, your, your players, we're going to steal your members, we're going to steal um, different things that, that you're doing and you've laid the ground, now we're going to come in and sweep in and I'm going to open a fitness center, but I don't want a fitness center. So right. Wait, so Scott, are you saying that if we give it up to one group, then another group has the right to request oh, yeah. it? Not necessarily. That was so, for approval. But, but you need to have a policy for how you can deal with right. the situation. And, and that's what I think Ron has started with. And I'm not trying to just blow this up and say, well, oh, everything is going to go bad. But you should just think about how you're going to deal with each individual group that, that requests things. And then there's going to be people that say, well, this is what you, you gave this to them. Why not? Yeah. But the requests are generally legitimate and well-intended. Yeah. Right? So we've got to come from that position as well, where this is going to benefit a lot of people. A and, lot of people. I think uh, I would agree with that in general, but you always have to think about the outliner group too. That that hey, this is now become public information for one group. Why not us? Also, or you dealt with them in one way. Why are you dealing with us differently? Different. So, so that's why I think Ron wants the guidelines that that this board is comfortable with, and that's the messages coming to staff at that point. So. Good well, if we ever gave out emails to a group, we could always just say, just please put that unsubscribe thing on the bottom, so if they don't want it. Yeah, they the can problem is who the unsubscribe to? The email? They just say they don't want to receive future emails. And, and then you have to make sure that that's really happening. I, I unsubscribe from something about 20 times. Yeah. The, the solicitation I get for for, for some type of legal education thing that I don't want. Well, I think, there, I think there's another issue here is if it's our email, and as a private yeah. business person, we'll never get our emails out no. to anybody. We just care. Um, but as a, as a public body, okay, we have a discussion, but then who's controlling the message? That's right. They sent to our email address, and with all due respect to the golf group, there is some stuff that's been posted onto that Facebook page that's just not accurate. So do they get to send out emails to our group that doesn't have accurate information? We don't want to. This is not a discussion. This is a board discussion right now. Right. Right. Okay, that's a good point. But here, on the point, I'm just pointing out that in this specific thing here, it says that we will not disclose, you know, email addresses. And I think that you know we receive requests for those, and I think we will re receive requests for those. You know, for example, so we have to decide. You know, and have further conversations to. I think it'd be great to say no right now. I mean, we can say no right sure. now until we further uh, yeah. from this as a board. Right. I'd, I'd be very hesitant to be giving that out. Well, yeah. based on. <laughs> Well, I just heard that, or yes. Well, well, just, Facebook uh, is different, right? Because that's not even Facebook is well, is a completely different. No, but I'm saying that, so no. But the point is, if they right. have the email address for our the residents and the people who use our park district, that message can be anything unless right. we're writing the email. Right. So it's messaging and it's branding. Yeah. Right, and it's approval of messages that contain the brand and the assets of the park district. Yeah. Right. So exactly, it's all. So it's a bigger it's discussion than, than, than right now than we can have on this, I think. I agree. So I think yeah, this, absolutely. This is a good start. It's Ron. a start. It's a start. I think there's a lot of these topics that have layers.
Yep. I do foresee quite a few topics coming up. I can see the skate park. People are asking me about that, and people are asking me about the Blair Park tennis court. So I thought this is the right okay. opportunity for us to start thinking about it. So. Okay. So then, I guess in particular, we have some requests on the table, and I think this is goes back to, you know, is it going through a committee? Is it going through one board member? Is it going through to Rob? Are you saying committee the whole? So one of the things uh, I think uh, I have a couple items that are in the packet as an example, but let's use the example of the survey. So we have uh, one of our residents have a you know willing to donate his time for a survey, work with Franz on this. As a board, do you want to just authorize Franz to go with this, or do you want to see it, and do you want to approve it? Because if, if, if um, you know, does the board want to know if someone comes up to you and say, oh, I took that survey, and you're like, what survey? Mm -hmm. So where, where are the kind of control mechanisms, I guess, but also right. protection? And how is it branded? And how is it distributed? Right. I think that matters, <clears throat> right? So it depends who it's coming from. And that's one thing we talked about is it shouldn't be coming from the park district, or should it be, or should it not? Um, and then who does it go to and how? So distribution, distribution. Is, it, you know, it is a factor. So I'm not looking to get into the detail of that existing survey, the questions on there. But well, yeah. content of a survey, we've always been really careful about when we do a survey, the home board looks at the survey, talks about it, gets comfortable with That's the question. That's when we do a survey. Right. 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 This is not a necessarily well, initiated by... But it'll be going through our system. This is a distribution. Right. So... So yeah, so if that's if it's gonna go through our system, I would as a board member like to see it. Right. Oh me too. So but we don't if they, see if, they, right. if, if it was we done didn't in, see everything that Billy Casper yeah. sends out. I mean we don't. And Mark. it goes to staff does. I mean, right? Oh, so I guess we define the we. Yeah, we is we them to them to us. That's us. us. We know what they're. In terms I mean, we of saw that promotion. email plan. We know exactly what's going out right. coming up in the next two weeks. So, if it was a front, I'm with you. If it, if it was a group, just, it, if the group does it on their own and sends it out to right. their own list, they can that message can be whatever they'd like it to be. But we have to pre preserve our brand. In that. We Agreed. can't have our brand, the brand of the park district, if it hasn't even been seen or. The park district's not even aware of it, right? So yeah, that creates a precedent that could be really troubling. I, you know, I, uh, and honestly, committees gather information and then make recommendations to the right. board. So it, it has to be a board review and approval um, okay. prior to any action. Maybe a committee review is that. Yeah, so I think that's a good way to do it. Recommendation, but um, but I think still going back to what I was saying earlier, because the, the golf subject. <coughs> Taken off the shoulders of that committee and uh, as a committee as a whole. It's so you mean not go through committee? Well, maybe in because this, you know, unlike these other uh, citizen groups we've had, this subject is a really big one. I mean, this is this is a you know the 800 pound gorilla kind of discussion, and it's it's a tough one. And I think it's almost too much for a committee to handle. Uh, personally speaking. Um, but things still go through the committees first well, and then goes to the um I think it has to, Rob. I think it has yeah, to go well, through there I, and then get okay that there's but I guess, and then it as presented like out. the survey, let's use this example. I think the survey for ninety nine percent of it is great. Okay. And, and totally but I want to have the input on the one percent. Right. right. And so you have a copy right right so, now and so you would what you're suggesting is okay, the committee thinks it's a good idea. You know, recommends it to the, brings it to the board. And then we have a chance the to make comments. Use it. Yep. And then. Approves. So that was a great example because you guys did 99% of the lifting on it, and I'm 99% comfortable with it. <laughs> or they did, they did with your guidance. Mm -hmm. But I would like to. There's one or two questions here that I have. Would like to have a discussion. That's it. That's all. And a 
I think that's, I like that. I think it should start with the golf committee and they should make a recommendation after a thorough review and then we have a chance to give our input. It's just that there's been so much coming at your committee on all different levels. Well, I mean, we have to bolt that committee up when we, when we, when we put people on it. Well, that, that may be, uh, like we need to think certain special situations is not just that committee, it's, it's maybe the committee as a whole. Okay. Because of the magnitude of Information is coming at you guys. I mean, it's 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 a I mean, well, yeah, there, there's I'm some getting copied a lot. Yeah, there's stuff. some there's some you know quick examples that I think I'd like to get on the table so that we can get direction. Right. And sorry to put you in a, a position tonight, but the technology requests. <coughs> Flat and I had a very good conversation today on what they're looking for, and from the questions, I think it's um, using our messaging our distribution on ourselves. They have some ideas. Can we throw those ideas your way? Can we sit down? What's the timeline? Are you going to be able to, to promote to donate? Yeah. Had Somebody a good talk with her. And I, in, yeah. in my opinion, I think that's OK. I mean, yeah. that's, there's people out there that have some good ideas. But again, we're controlling the distribution and the messaging, but we're getting some good ideas. I, I'm, that's kind of what we did with the other four it, groups. It's an example of a request that is very specific to a certain, potentially to a certain population, but we're gonna get these requests again. So the technology piece today may not be available, right? I don't know if our database is segmented and if you have the Which capabilities, we can. right? I don't know if you have these capabilities. If you do, and it's an easy, you know, an easy ask and something fairly easy to manage, I think as long as, if, I, if the group feels comfortable with that, I can sit down with, individuals and say listen there needs to be an easy ask here so you know we can't have a lot of staff time on this and i think that's after understanding what this request is and i had a really good conversation today i think it is more simpler than simpler. how it's phrased okay. here yeah. so i think that we can check the box on that one and i would be in control as long as the board feels comfortable saying hey ron keep staff to the limit we control the message the distribution i can I can go back to that group, and I think they would respect that and understand that, and we can get that done. Okay. I just have a question. Why can't we have Billy Casper working with them? I mean, we're paying them. And this is like a lot of the stuff's marketing. Why can't they work? Well, we would be. Them? They would be at the meeting with us. So okay. because there's things from our yeah, absolutely. And we'd be working with them. And I think your but, point about branding is an excellent point. That I think that's really important. The thing is, we don't want to be meeting weekly. We want to put a schedule together on what's going on. I don't think, you know, if we're being organized and we have a calendar of when we're going to send things out, a kickoff meeting, that's pretty simple. But the last thing we want to be doing is spending two hours in a meeting each week going through it all. I think we can have good conversation. Uh, and yeah, eventually, together. you know, if we get, and I don't know if we have this capability, but it'd be nice if you are a resident that you select what you want to receive information on. And I don't know if that's possible with the new website or with our new technology, but you know sometimes you, know, you get these kinds of websites where, hey, I'm interested in this, but I'm not interested in that, so that you don't opt out of everything and everybody loses. And that's what I don't want to do. As I, if we message people with the wrong message that they don't want to receive, and they hit unsubscribe. As so you're thinking yeah. through that, right? So I'm assuming you guys are thinking Technology-wise, we will have the capabilities with the new website, yes, to be oh, able to, cool. when we collect that data, ask them those questions of what you want to receive content. Right. Of the current like email database that we have, the only, I don't have segmentation from somebody saying, yes, I want to receive messages on golf, or yes, I want to receive messages on the fitness center. When we segment the database, we either segment per based on um, the customer's behavior and the data that we have in our database of uh, their fitness members, if they bought a pool pass, or if they come, whatever that data is, or we've segmented them on their interaction with our previous emails. So they've clicked and they've shown an interest in golf. We know some of our recent golf stuff has been individuals who came to meetings, individuals who clicked on, opened and clicked through previous emails on golf. So we aren't just bombarding our entire email database with every golf message, because we know not every resident wants to get every golf message, and we still want to be able to access those customers 
with the fitness members. So, you know, fitness. Good, so we're getting there. Building those capabilities. We are, but we're not 100% there. I guess it's a long way around. Right. And there's times we will want to send out a mass e-blast and we might be our first one to talk about what's going on here and donate now, but we might not do that in a single week. I mean, segment to every couple of weeks or so. So, so I think we have the te technology that, that request. Um, I think others were examples that, that we were going through the committee with, so I think we saw that, kind of checked that. I wanted that, that memo that I gave to France and Chris in terms of recommendations. I just wanted to give you as an example of the type of request that they're fielding as a committee. So um, that's what I wanted to make you aware of. Uh, the latest request was that as if, if we are to um, message some things and whether it's some posters or whatever the case is, the thermometer is, uh, the request is, you can help me to put the slogan, save the golf course on that. And so I think tonight, I think it's important because we need, I need to get messaging out in general. And if that's phrasing you want, and that's an example of branding. branding and, and I know we're here tonight, but we're heading into a lot of messaging create a conversation here, but I think it's important to get back to them and to put it on a committee, and the committee meets next week, and then we have to have a committee the whole meeting, and now we're through a lot of red tape, and so that, uh, that was from the conversation I had with Glenn today. So, sorry to put you in that, but I think it's important so that we know as staff, you know, what, what some of the messaging you want as a board. Because if I sent you an email or I called each one of you, I could have all different things and I'll never know which direction to go. So are you, are you referencing this? this is it, yeah. Yeah. question? Yes, yeah, it's a question. It's out there. Uh, using it's a question. It's a request that came in. Using the, the language, save the golf course. Save That's the right. lake long golf course. I'm sorry, save the lake long golf course. And is it park district branded? Or is it Lake Bluff Golf Association branded? It's or is it just it's part of it's neither? It's part of it's part of it. uh, that's, that wasn't the right that wasn't what we passed. That wasn't uh, what we just did. I mean we agreed to two hundred and sixty five thousand to keep it open in two thousand nineteen. This is not this is a four million dollar problem. This is not a two hundred and sixty five thousand dollar problem. Mm -hmm. So I would struggle with save the golf course for two hundred sixty-five thousand dollar raise. Support the golf course. So well, I'm good with that. Yeah, I think the word save. Yeah, I mean support is, is a great. It was a tricky word. I like word. support. Yeah, I, like that. I mean that's a that's fine with me because we we need to step back and take a thirty thousand foot perspective that we are a park district um, and we support. Park District supports the golf course and all operations in this district. And so we support, yeah. save has a different meaning to it that um, makes me feel a little uneasy uh, as, as a Park District representative of the tax dollar of our community. Uh, yeah, we're misleading is what I think you're saying because it's, it's well, misleading. For an independent oh, yeah. entity to say that that's fine, but I think it's a park district. Right. We got to be equal amongst all operations in support. I, I don't know if we can just say, you know, uh, you know, I got five kids in the world, but you know, you're going to get different treatment. I can't do that. <laughs> so we want to be able to put whatever the phrasing is, a letter that's going to go out to the community, flyers, you know, whatever it says. We want it to be consistent, brand. So, I mean, I, I'm good so, to support the golf course. I don't know if anybody else. I'm okay with Sora. Except for, from a character standpoint, sometimes support is too many letters. You know, like if you're putting, we're looking at putting a, a thermometer, right, of progress that we'd like to put here at at the park district. If support doesn't fit. You know, we're going from a poor character word to 
a six, seven character word. It sometimes makes a difference. I think it's more the. I think I think we're. I think it's. I don't know. I. I wouldn't want to mislead either. You know, because I. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, we voted to, if that money's raised, we voted to keep it open in 2019. That's what we've committed to as a board. Right. Is there another short word we could use? Help. Help? Help. H-E-L-P, four letters. That's, that's good. Right? That's a little, you know, I guess it doesn't come across as Christine. I think our, our, the semantics lean to well, semantic, this is board discussion, please. Um, semantics needs to be all encompassing for me. Well, we did go to the community about this one topic this year. So, you know, we kind of initiated that we are looking at this asset. So now that there's now donations and pledges, you know, activity going on regarding that I don't think is inconsistent in one way right yes I know we're not talking you know helping with beach but right now we don't have a group that wants to be doing that right now we've got people that want to support this so well if we're gonna save the golf course we're gonna save the park district <laughs> because honestly this golf course let's face it everyone, threatens the well-being of this park district. This park district could be tanked, potentially, by the deficits this course is running. So we should say save the park district, not just the golf course. I mean, this is getting ridiculous. I, I, if we're going to say save the golf course, no, we I, save I, I, will not, I don't think people I, I will not agree yeah, I'm not sure there's a lot of support. Well, I, I say the word support, that's what I'm in favor of, or help. I do either one of those two words. Is there anything acceptable? That we have leverage in either one of those based on um, characters, then that's fine. I like support and help. I like those two words. Support. I, say, I just can't I think get behind people understand say. what it I means because they know what's going on, right? So I think the message. Well, I'm just thinking of like future, future, like you know, somebody comes up to us and they want to save the, you know, skate park, and now we're like, okay, let's try to save the skate park, and we're going to start saving everything. Well, we, unfortunately, everything probably won't be saved. Those tennis courts that are falling apart, right. they probably won't be saved. Well, it's we also have misleading the because of the number, right? 260 doesn't necessarily bite it itself. Doesn't well, save it's it. what we, it, it's yeah. the motion we approved does not save the golf course. It, it, it keeps it open in 2019, and that's going to really not fit on our logo. Maybe like put a band aid, right? <laughs> that definitely won't fit. No, that's not going to work. It right out the window. That's too long. Can you make a pot smaller? All right, so. So, so I think we're okay support? with support. Are we good on support for it? I'm good on support. I'm good on that. Yeah. Okay. okay. You got there. You go. You okay. got your word or help, whichever one they'd like to do. Is there anything else that we do? We see this thing before. You guys want to see it before it goes up everywhere, or are we good? With well, that that's that, that. that's kind of the direction in general. This is a big topic, so if you want to, it'd be nice to maybe see what yes. is planned for the next yeah. two weeks. You know, yes. so that we don't have to. Yeah. Get yeah, together. I don't want to answer questions if something goes out we don't know about it. Yes. Right. So I think maybe if we can see kind of what the ads or the plans or the wording or the letters look like and everybody gets a copy, yeah. right, then maybe we can move and these I things can do forward more without a formal thing. It's, you know, you, and that you can get back to me and if it's email. four or three and not a true vote and it's not That's going cool. back and forth and violating the Laws that at least get a general sense. Okay, can I can I get at least a general sense of since we're here, you have five of these. The word support or help. Is there? I know you want to see it. Is there one you're leaning towards? I think it's just nuts. The word save. Okay. It's so one of those two. I think one of those two. And support yeah. seems more more positive, kind of to me than help. But that's the only question you asked. 
So that's the only question we're answering. Okay. Yeah. Help. How about that? Help is what you yell when you're in trouble. Right. So I'm support sure. to me is the word. Yeah, that's help connotates yeah. something. Oh, like support. Support. Yeah. Okay. Support. Or call. Support the Alvigo. Okay. Susan, anything? Is there anything else you want us to weigh in? No, I'm sorry. No. Uh, okay. I think those were the, the key things. Okay. Well, um, Ron, is that a sufficient on um, a consensus here for you? Yeah, that, that, thank you. Sorry to have that discussion tonight. Well, no, no, no. I, yeah. I sure. do have one question that I think it wasn't clear to me with respect to the donations. And I want us all to know. So if someone makes a donation to the golf course and the golf course happens to close, what happens to that pool? The, where does it go? How the board deems necessary. Okay. I just want to so make sure. So it's not unfundable. It's not unfundable, but it can, so it's not restricted? Uh, they're unrestricted funds. Unrestricted. So it, it's, it will go under their golf course fund. It's not, uh, it's just for accounting purposes. Yeah. You could request to them to say, hey, we would like to be able to take those funds. And we would get input. And, and you would get input and go through a process. Okay. All right. That's a good question. That's all I have. <laughs> Okay, well, can we move on to the clubhouse, locker room, and general one side area? <coughs> yeah, so I, I think this kind of goes back to the guidelines where we're talking about the last four things, you know, the last four community groups that supported the district uh, tied into building improvements or, in, or capital improvements. And so um, some board members have asked me, well, where did this come from? Should we see things? I authorized this, they came to me. I thought it was a good thing. I at least authorized from the standpoint of, hey, this is a building improvement. I uh, didn't allocate the dollars. I just said, I think it's great. I, I met with them to look over the samples and what they wanted to do. I thought it was beautiful, I thought it made sense. Uh, we have a group of people very similar to whether it's the preschool grooming to do some building improvements. And so uh, I think uh, I think what they put together is fabulous. They want to put in their time. And so uh, that uh, to request $1,000, especially whether we would have done it ourselves or that, we would have put in some money either way. Maybe not this year, we didn't budget for it. But I think in the end, uh, it's going to look very nice and things so that's the least people walk in. So I am looking, I'm going to take questions, but looking for The forward. men's side is... The men's side is more updated, so don't ask me why one was a long time ago. Big years. I knew, yeah. I knew this was going to yes. come up. But <laughs> why? So I was just like, what, the carpet's not used? <laughs> or the carpet's yeah. not green? It, 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 it absolutely <laughs> Well, maybe before me. Well, so, they, so they, they don't look the same. No, the same today. no, no. But there'll be some work in the general area of where the concession, new tablecloths, things like that. They're very tasteful, very uh, upbeat. Uh, I, I, I really like it. Thank I really you. Like That's it. awesome. Thank, Thank you. you very much. So, you know, approval for that. If you agree. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Good. So, can I have a motion? to authorize volunteers to make improvements to the golf clubhouse women's locker room and general areas specific to painting and flooring. Only if volunteer waivers are signed, volunteer companies uh, provide insurance and the park is provide funding not to exceed $1,000. So, so second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Earhart? Yes. Commissioner McKendry? Yes. Commissioner Patera? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. President Douglas? Yes. I'm going to have to wake okay, you up. Okay, moving on. Been down for uh, uh, <laughs> written communications. Um, what's on the file? Yep. We've got your community comments in there and correspondences. 
Yes. So, should we move on yeah. to the verbal communications? Yeah, I, and I think it's good to discuss here is uh, I received a phone call from Drew Urban today and about the residential, institutional, and open space zoning. It's right around 3 o'clock. And the village is looking to hold a public hearing with the PCZBA uh, regarding that document. I requested a 30 days for us to review so that we can take a look at it before it goes to public, to the PCZBA. So he's checking on a few things. Um, I think it would be good for Scott to take a look at it because if there's anything that we need to do, you know, with zoning or a special use permit, I think it'd be good for them to look at as well as Hitchcock Design. We originally had Hitchcock Design start working on the beach. When we were looking at the beach, we had it in the budget to do some institutional zoning. As Drew brought it up to us almost two years ago. And they're really good at this, better than a, a cliff, or this is what Hitchcock they're really good at. So to be able to have them do a glance at this and be able to say, hey, watch out for this park district, or think about this, or think about that. Um, and for the board to review this at a committee the whole meeting, because again, you put a request into them, and I, I told you it's important, just like we're talking about guidelines, for the board to see things and comment on before it goes to a uh, whole okay. village committee. Can you give a little background on Hitchcock? Just so yeah, Hitchcock, I'm sorry, yes, you're right. So Hitchcock design we used with uh, uh, our playgrounds. So they're a landscape architect firm. They do things in Ohio, Indiana, a lot in Illinois. Uh, they do great work, but they did great work on the, the playgrounds. They worked with the Parks and Beach Committee. Uh, but this would be specific to looking at kind of these guidelines. It should be a pretty short, short review for them, as well as to get the attorney to take a look at it. And I want to see if you're comfortable with that. I, I don't think we want to just look at it and say, for staff to look at it and say it's okay. Um, this is this is an important step. This is this is our future of our land and what basically what we can do on it, as well as. What are the processes if we want to do something with the land? Let's say it's, I don't know, a change down at the beach. And what's the process for us? What's, what's involved? So I think we need the right people to do some quick review for us. Uh, and I wanted to make sure you were okay so with that. Hitchcock potentially could bring some language in from other um, park districts they've worked with. Absolutely, on us. To make sure we don't get um, it's not too constrictive. Well, like, no offense for the legal profession, but you know that poison pill that can be sometimes buried in a document. You know, let's make sure there's nothing in there like that. Yeah. There's always ways we can be to our advantage. And I would, you know, and I would agree that you'd all want to see it. <coughs> this is a top four of your core elements here to be looking at golf and the, the land. So, okay. okay. Good. So I'll keep it very limited in the scope of work. I mean, it shouldn't be much at all. So a few hours here and there. But, uh, so I wanted to give you an update on that. And uh, the committee of the whole meeting is listed for June 4th. Uh, it's my daughter's graduation. So uh, I know Rob's unable to make it. Is June, would June 11th be okay to kind of go maybe through some if there's nothing that's upcoming, we don't need to meet. But if there's, you know, the guidelines and the ADA, uh, and the change to do a lot for you. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Looks for me. I'm here. Okay. There might be other requests. There might be. Uh, it might have this zoning. It might. There might be just a couple things we need to go through in an hour's time. So, okay. I'll send something. Uh, the only thing I think I have in there is regarding NRPA. Uh, so if we really have not had a commissioner go, I think it would be great for someone to attend. It's in Indianapolis. It's learning all about park districts and what's involved in uh, legal. Uh, it's, it's a really great conference. So talk to President. I think that'd be great for Black. Corey, that's right up your alley. For Chris. <laughs> France, France is going to Springfield already. I went to Springfield. You did go to Springfield. I think Chris would be really good. Are you voting? Yeah, <laughs> he's not here. Yeah, that's <laughs> three. Rock is neither. 
days. It's three days, yeah. Is that how that works? I think we've talked about that actually. Yeah. 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 Springfield and Indianapolis are great places. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, but it is a great opportunity to meet other board members, to learn about the park systems in general. So I, I think that's I, that's my point. Um, I'll turn it over to staff. Okay, uh, a couple of things. We just uh, wrapped up our uh, training for our pool and beach staff uh, this past weekend. Um, we had about 75 uh, staff members that attended. We only had five that actually uh, missed out on that training because they were in college and they're, they're just making their way back. So over the next two weeks, we'll be doing some more training with our managers. Uh, this year, um, we are uh, doing an LGI that's a lifeguard instructor training. Uh, we only have one LGI that allows us to do further training with our lifeguards, that we don't have to hire an outside source to do that. Instead, we can do it internally. So we're going to, we're offering this course. We haven't offered this course in, since I've been here, so this will be the sixth summer. Um, so it'd be great. We have six uh, young individuals that'll be with us for the next three to four years and giving them this training will help train other lifeguards in the future. Um, also, uh, with the Pool Beach, we open up next weekend. So that's uh, really exciting. It's kind of hard to believe, but uh, the water at least is uh, about 78 degrees. Uh, I don't know about the air temperature outside, uh, but hopefully uh, we have uh, good weather this coming weekend. Cool. Something new at the pool uh, this year, we're gonna have some vendors for the first time at the pool. Uh, right now, I, I had a discussion with Frost, uh, so word will be getting out. Frost is out of Highland Park, um, and they'll be uh, having a gelato cart out there, um, and they'll be selling it versus us selling the ice cream. A lot of people have asked us uh, through surveys that, uh, and just from having conversations with pool members, that they've really wanted to see some more uh, food besides our regular concessions. Uh, we've or try to partner with the golf and we send them that way but they want something uh, a little bit more a little different something that's right there uh, at the pool deck so um, we are looking at a couple of vendors I haven't had any uh, finalization on agreements yet but we should know uh, about at least one of the hot food vendors by the end of this week um, something else we also hired a let me make sure I got this title correct uh, we filled the guest service manager, but it's actually going to fill a little bit of two roles. Uh, so we have a guest service manager slash, slash business service specialist. Uh, Amy Cash, uh, she was one of our contractual people that was working on uh, payroll and was, she was working uh, directly with uh, Rich Rothman and his daughter. Uh, she is uh, now started as that uh, in that role, and uh, we're really happy to have her. She's going to be a great asset, um, a great team member. Um, and it's, it does save us money. It saves us money because uh, we don't have to pay a contractual fee anymore. And so it's, and where her salary is was where it was budgeted. So we're actually be able to save some contractual dollars. So that was a win win. Still be able to accomplish all the goals, payroll, things like that. So, yes. so it's full time. It's, it's an existing, it was, we had uh, Maria Freddy left, uh, she resigned, and, and so it's to fill that position, but we were able to combine two positions into one to save the district one. That's it. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. I have one uh, update on the golf course. Dominic came to me today, and uh, we were supposed to aerate greens, start aerating greens today, but with the weather, and what the weather looks like for the rest of the week. We're going to postpone that till the weather dries up a little bit, and then we're going to kind of downsize our aeration regime so that it has a less of an impact on the golfers and, and revenue. Okay. That's it. Just two quick things. Uh, a, another event on June 23rd, we're going to host our kickoff for the Go Lake Bluff. Uh, kind of campaign, but it'll be our big initial kickoff event. Um, it will be a community walk from Artesian Park down to the beach and then back to Artesian Park. It's the same day as the auto show in, uh, the, uh, in, in the village. So we're going to incorporate that earlier in the day and try and tie in uh, with the two. Um, so just wanted to throw that out there that it's June 23rd and I anticipate right now start time is noon. So we'd love to have 
commissioners attend. Bring your dogs, bring your, yes. And there'll be a family wow. fun day uh, in our teaching park afterwards. So that Okay, will you really cool. advertise that though? Yeah. <laughs> like, let's hear about it. Let's like, hear through about Facebook. It. Yep, we will. All, all that. Because I think that could be, I mean, like, going, working with the schools and getting that out, I think that could be awesome um, if the word gets up. And then just a second thing, just a little bit of an update on just a couple things that we're working on with regards to email marketing and marketing in general with BCG that wasn't included in the report. Um, Billy Casper is slated to start targeted marketing towards Highland Park. They haven't done a lot recently just because of the conditions and just kind of be throwing dead money um, at it. But uh, they're going to be doing some paid social advertising. So that's Instagram and, and Facebook primarily. They're going to target our men's club, uh, target outings, as well as price specials. Uh, the other thing they're going to do is uh, set up geo fences around Highland Park Country Club, or what used to be Highland Park Country Club, and Sunset Valley, uh, which is going to be reopening here this year, um, and the app. So if uh, an individual has the app, the golf courses app downloaded, they will get a friendly reminder when they approach either of those two properties about just how convenient Lake Bluff is located. So those are set up now. Um, and then the last thing that we did today was we did remove the um, email server uh, for the BCG users from this SORBS list, which is a basically a, a blocking spam filtering uh, site. Um, we've been on and off this list since 2007. This isn't a first for us to be on the list. Um, so we have now removed ourselves from that list. A lot of ESPs or email service providers will go to that list. Um, that's kind of like the first spot they go when they're building their spam filters. Um, so by getting us off the list, it will hopefully help some of our deliverability issues that we're having. Um, and then we are constantly actually, we're working with Excalibur, the Park District's technology company, continue to evaluate, so they're going to be doing a weekly check of the source list to make sure that email, that our server doesn't end up back on that list, and then if it does, they will do a thorough analysis of all email messages that have recently gone out just to see if there was anything inside those messages, any content that might have triggered uh, us being re-added to the list. And um, that is for the Billy Casper and the Park District? That is, we are not, the, so, so the Park District's email is not on that list. Okay. The Park District, uh, you know, recreation at lakebluffparks.org is not on that list. What is on that list is the info at lakebluffgolfclub.com is was on that list. Okay. We were on, we were well, removed, good. we got mm -hmm. back on, we're now removed again. It's going to be an ebb and flow, we're continuing to evaluate yeah. and doing everything we can for those deliveries. I think that when we, did, think we right. loaded all of our Park District emails over there yeah. last year, I mean, we don't know for a fact or that's it, we don't have that. Well, thank you for, you know, hunting that down. We know that that was kind of the first step mm -hmm. in the promotions, so that's good. That's good. Uh, I, well, I do want to add something in terms of, uh, uh, I talked with uh, my counterpart at the North Park, Park District and Highland Park, Park District, and Northbrook have a reciprocal agreement for their residents with golfers because Sunset Valley is under construction and then Northbrook's going to be under construction, Sportsman's going to be under construction. Those two, it's exclusive to those two. Um, talked with Northbrook, they haven't seen that much activity yet from Highland Park. We're going to obviously go after that. I know others are as well. I will be uh, talking to them and requesting their information about how many people are they getting from that, even with the reciprocal agreement. So uh, it'll be interesting to see in Deerfield, other courses. Um, I mean, we need to go after it, it makes sense, but it'll be interesting to see how that all works out. So I didn't realize they had some reciprocal agreement going on uh, until last week. But the, it was exclusive to those two because they tied their construction of right. courses. Because I do feel will that when I got we're all wondering right. how come we didn't get involved with that. It's purely because of the construction. Mm -hmm. So sorry, I wanted to bring that up. Okay. Alright. That's that. Okay. Any um, I guess uh, as far as any of the committees? Yeah, so the finance committee, well, um, 
we were supposed to have a meeting May 31st. We'll have to find out. Uh, Franz can make that. The auditor can come out that day. If not, we'll find a different day. So we'll be <laughs> on the Wednesday before with the Facilities and Programs Committee, but who's going to be on that? So I don't know if we somehow can keep it same or just to get through these couple meetings. Yeah, I think I just committee I mean, Committee should probably stay. Because you and Brock could meet that day. I will be happy to review. The Would you be happy, happy to review the? Audit? I will. I will. It'd be great. We've got one too. That same week. Let's, that same day. You've gone through an audit process before because right. you were originally on the committee. So, well, let's I keep the committees. Okay. I'll as, keep my current one. Okay. Keep the committees as it is until our June board meeting. Yeah, we okay. only are going to have one. So, okay, that will help me. That's out. fine. Okay, That's fine. good. I can get that. that out. So then we have the Facilities and Programs Committee, Tri Board Meeting, we don't have anything upcoming. Friends of the Lake Bluff Parks, they are uh, definitely are trying to meet to uh, answer some good questions by the Golf Association, so they're all just trying to find a day and time to meet. So uh, that's what we have. Can you let the rest of the board know when the Friends are meeting, just in case someone still wants to Yes, that'd be great. Any commissioner comments at all? I have nothing to report at this point. So we have a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Any none? We're done.